Uh, my opponent's chosen to play first, and Snap kept his hand. We're faced with a basically Snap Mulligan. I have two turns to run island, if I don't, I've lost. Um, so, yeah. yes, I would like to Mulligan. Uh, that hand's slow, but fine. Federal Lana Morales and awesome. Me and my opponent had a nice chat during the sideboarding because I couldn't submit a deck because Modo obviously has built another, well, developed another bug. But he asked me if I'm still on the train, to which the answer is sadly no, but it's nice to get recognised. <laughs> Shame. I had to give up the train for studies, although that was mainly my fault. <laughs> if I'd done alright in my exams, then I would have been able to go to Amsterdam. But anyway, back to the game. So, like, lions are fine for me because <laughs> I've got my Miser's Wall against his flying deck. So, even when you mulligan, you can run a little bit good. Uh, try and block. There you go. And a fly, oh, I was say a fly is not what I want to see, but having said that, I draw this. I think it's still better to cast 4C though, just to tap out and smooth out my draws a lot more. If you mana leaks, that's fine. Um, that's a pretty tough one. I don't want a Sacred Wolf, because it's not doing anything. And I don't really want a Scroll Thief either. Pre putting Preordain on the bottom is about the same as keeping it on top at the moment because it will probably scry me into a land but I don't really want to tap a land to be able to do that because I want to start casting 5 drops so I think at this point normally I keep Preordain on top just because it gives you that extra card but at this point it's better to put it on the bottom and Clone is pretty much always good and I drew the land so perfect drawing land means I should have kept Preordain on top but <laughs> whatever Hindsight is always twenty twenty. And he has uh, Jason JT. So I definitely make a land. Um, I don't really want to. I do, definitely don't want Ingenuity because I want to develop my board, otherwise I'm taking 4 next turn for no gain and also have the discard at the end of the turn. There's nothing worth cloning at the moment, and I don't want to Augury and then have no follow-up because it's like tapping 2 mana on turn 5 is really bad, and therefore I'll just make the guy that blocks the pit line and pass. It's not the most impressive turn 5 off of 4C, but it's good enough. What it means. I mean, next turn I can augury out and clone something big. I mean, I have a lot of options. Uh, he pacifies. That's that's not too bad. It's better than I think some unicate or something. Uh, yeah, I'll make my augury out. Let's see what's on top. Bottom, that can hit the bottom. Next turn, I can fawn a shaman and put uh, and make Jace's ingenuity, so that's pretty good. Which means my mana will be clogged up for a while. Which means I'm going to clone a spine dweller and pass. Make a boom boom yoga. I mean, it's twice as big as any of his guys at the moment, so. If he makes a guy that's bigger than it, I'll just mind control it, make a fawn shaman and pass. Like, this game's looking not too bad. And he makes a good guy, hopefully. Air servant. Something along those lines. He's, he's really... Oh no, it's an just ingenuity I didn't even see. Well... I was waiting for the creature and it never came. Uh, 
there. Yeah, I think he's alright to just bash now. I don't mind taking two off a lion if I'm dealing him five. My mind control really affects the race. And I'll make a fallen shaman and pass because Jason Genuity is an instant. Thankfully. Means I can sort of play around Mana League a little bit. A lot of things I can do next turn. If Jason Genuity resolves and Fauna Shaman becomes auto active, really, if he makes a huge guy, I'm mind controlling it. It's a pretty close game because I'm on 10 life, but I can definitely pull this out. Despite him drawing 6 cards. But I mean, I've had a 40 in Ingenuity if it resolves. So the card advantage is not. It's, it's slightly lost on him. He's thinking for a while, which is bad, because in game one he thought for a while and then won. He played it really well, though. He. He is not the. He's obviously not as bad as the average Magic Online opponent, although they are better than the average real life opponent. Uh, during the editing, he has made an either a deck, which is fine, I guess. Yeah, he bounces my tapped one, so it doesn't affect how he's going to attack. And he also has an air seven. Yes, that is great for me. Odd that he. It's very odd that he bounces my clone and then makes an air seven. You might have forgotten that the clone was a. The spined one was actually a clone. But either way, that's fine for me. I'll be drawing three cards and then stealing his S7. And then I'll probably Fauna Shamaning as well. Oh wow. Uh, yeah, first things first. One, two, three, four. I think I'm probably going to either debt his Pegasus as well. Just because I can, really. Like, um, actually, I don't know. It's the same effect as tapping. I mean, it's, it's kind of a hard situation. I think I do just want to get another guy on the board. And my Lanner Elves is a good Fauna Shaman fodder. So, yeah, this is fine. Either debt his Pegasus and pass. I just want to get a guy on the board at this point, and my clone is another either debt if I do need another either debt. So that's perfectly fine. I now have an auto win in Stampede, provided no safe passage. He doesn't seem to have any counter spells on safe passages from what I've seen. So we can reasonably not play around that. Then again, he has drawn a lot of cards. So we need to be careful what we do play around. He excommunicates his own air servant, that's fine. And he's attacking, which is interesting. As much as I would like to mm, keep guys on the board, I think I also would like to not die. I mean, this buys me a lot of turns by blocking. He makes a couple of flyers. Um, now what do I do? I can make a clone, but that wouldn't really do anything. I can... Yeah, what I think I'll do... Is... Fetch... <laughs> it sounds terrible, but I'll just fetch a giant spider. Because it means I'm not just dying to flyers. He can't tap it. It's, it's a nice flyer that can't be tapped. So... 
In fact, now I think about it, it might just be better to, like, I haven't seen an Inspired Charge, but I have seen a Mighty Leap. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If he Mighty Leaps this and attacks, I can just block 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. He can't make Air Servant, Mighty Leap, and tap, unless he has a land. I suppose he might have a land. <laughs> it's quite a difficult situation. Um, I can make a clone and bounce his as your Drake. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then make a Sacred Wolf 2. That would give me a fairly certain win with Overrun next turn. Well, let me work out if it would. It would be 5, 10, 15, 6, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 versus potential 4, 5, 6, 7. That would be exact. Yeah, I think that actually might be better. Clone to bounce as your Drake. Because then it means he can potentially tap out to just remake his guys, and then I know I've won. Yeah, I think that's the best. And I can attack with my Augriel, because he went block. And even if he does, it doesn't actually affect uh, my, my, yeah, the amount of damage I'm dealing. He'll just think I'm attacking because my guy's getting tapped. Then I can cycle my land rails. Sacred Wolf. Again, that's pretty good because he'll think I can. I'm getting it because it's three power, and so trade to their servant. Like he, it doesn't necessarily telegraph overwhelming stampede. So now I just need to hope he taps out. Uh, mighty leaps. What else could he have? Another mighty. Uh, what does he have? I don't get it. Oh, he casting by charge already. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Might as well say GG's. He had my sleep and inspired charge. There was not much I could do about that. I mean, I figured one or the other wouldn't kill me. Turns out, both would. Uh, so yeah. Thanks for watching, and tune in next time.